I'm getting better. Uh, hopefully, I'll fight uh, first quarter. When did you get your shoulder year. surgery? So I got it in like late March. What was it? Um, labrum, uh, That's but it was the actually most common, right? Yeah, labrum and rotator cuff, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my rotator cuff was just fine, um, and it's it's kept me out for a while. But the whole time I've been, um, and it was actually after being on the podcast last time talking about bullying. It's like, how can we make a difference? And there was such a response from JR, the JRE like community saying let's do something here also let's make a difference here in the united states of bullying how can you so how many, can you prevent bullying bullying what do you think i've always said that one of the best ways is teach people to actually fight yeah. i think that well, a lot of bullies are hugely insecure and mm-hmm. if they just learned how to fight they wouldn't act like that right i think i think martial arts is going to be a tool so what we want to do this year is is to get into a hundred martial arts academies um with a bullying prevention curriculum uh, a lot of people don't know that 160,000 kids in the United States alone, 160,000 kids every day skip school, skip school because of bullying. Yeah. That's 3 million school days lost a year. I'm sorry, a month, 3 million school days lost a month. And then I started digging into it because Oklahoma has become home now. And like 28.9% of the students deal with depression that's debilitating that affects them for two weeks or more school I mean, depression, addiction, suicides, and school shootings are all through the roof. And you now, know, what's the suicide this, rate that you said? Is, so, so it's insane. In Oklahoma, fit, this is the at risk youth um, behavior survey, and they say that 15.4, no, 15.1% of the students are de- dealing with suicidal ideation, like seriously considering suicide. And then 7.4, 7.4% of the students have attempted suicide. Attempted it. I was one of those kids. I was one of those kids, and that's seven out of a hundred kids have attempted suicide just in Oklahoma schools, and that 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 goes around the country too. Around that six percent, eight percent. I was on a, a bullying prevention um, summit uh, in San Antonio with Congressman um, or U.S. Representative Will Hurd. He brought me in to speak with Maureen Molak, and Maureen um, she has a foundation called David's Legacy. She started it because her son in San Antonio was getting ridiculed and cyber bullied relentlessly you know whenever we were growing up bullying would end at 3 p.m right. because you're out of school but now it just increases because yeah. kids aren't in school they aren't in class right and so th- so that's whenever they can really take off and start bullying well david had over 300 comments of people uh that, that were just brutally cyber bullying them a ton of them were calling for a suicide um, it went on for weeks and weeks they moved him from schools he attempted suicide not once or twice but his third time, his third time, he was successful, um, and I'm very proud of Maureen. Uh, very proud of her because she um, got a, a law passed called David's Law. David's Law is about cyberbullying. Uh, we want to see if we can get that into Oklahoma. What is the law? So the law basically, Maureen's family was told basically at school um, they the school was good to them. They were trying to make a difference, but they were basically saying their hands were tied. Their hands were tied from from doing anything about it because it was an overwhelming response of students. I mean, 300 students, and then it was off school property and it was online. So they said their hands were tied. Well, now um, the law basically brings into effect that law enforcement and the schools can get involved off a of school campus and they can look into the cyberbullying and they can take action against it. So it, it basically just means, hey, this is serious, um, and, and and it's not okay. Um, and we're going to stand up and do something about it. Texas, I'm, I'm proud of Texas. That's my home state. Um, they passed it 33 to 0. No one voted against it. Um, and it's really great. We're, we're working with a state representative named Colin Walkie um, in Oklahoma um, and uh, a judge, Trevor Pemberton. And then there's this principal named, uh, it's kind of sound like a joke. It, last week it was a MMA fighter with a politician. We went to dinner with a politician a judge and a high school principal, you know, MMA fighter, what brought us all together, you know, it was, it was bullying prevention. Um, but, uh, Debrion Davis, she's the high school principal of Edmond North. It's one of the biggest and one of the best public schools in Oklahoma. Um, and in the last nine years of her working in public schools, she's been to nine funerals of mm. kids that have all committed suicide. And, um, mm. it's, uh, it's just on the rise in such, a a, a brutal way. And, and one of the things that really touched my heart and wanted me to get into to this, like, hey, we've fight for the forgotten. We're always going to be focused on the pygmies. Uh, we're working with even expanding into the in Uganda. We're working with the pygmy king of, of the Batwa pygmies in Uganda. Um, we're looking to do land, water and food initiatives among them. 
but there's kids in our own community right here that feel forgotten. Um, and whenever I was a kid sitting at the lunch table by myself, getting pelted in the back of the head with chocolate spit wads, uh, food, fist, um, when kids were pulling up my shirt and slapping my belly and twisting my nipples in front of the girls and acting like they're hitting me with a harpoon, you know, cause I'm the size of a whale and all this stuff, you know, it, and, and telling me you should just kill yourself, telling me you should just kill yourself. You're worthless. You're nothing. I mean, I, I felt forgotten, um, and thought, you know, I, I am worthless and I should just kill myself and dealt with that over and over and over. And now the kids are taking action on that in such a in, incredible way that we've got to stand up and do something. And so we're, we're partnering and, uh, I'm really excited. Um, we are hopefully getting into hundred martial arts academies this year, um, to equip them with bullying prevention curriculum. Uh, it's called heroes in waiting. And you know, uh, a, a real inspiration to me. There's two things. Um, there's a Ted talk called the psychology of evil. I'll, I'll text you that link. It's, it's incredible, but it's the psychology of evil and it's by getting Philip Gambardo or something. Um, and in there, he kind of coins a term called heroes in waiting. Philip Zimbardo. Is that mm-hmm. who it is? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, then you, uh, you with the on it video that you did, be the hero of your own movie, you know, be the hero of your own movie. Um, I love that. I love that, 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 that you've spoken out and said that about people. That you can be the hero of your own movie. Well, Heroes in Waiting, the curriculum that we developed with Century and Maya, which is the Martial Arts Industry Association, um, it's all about teaching kids. It's, it's bullying prevention, but it's also character development. So, and that is what prevents bullying. Yeah, right? absolutely. I mean, the yeah. only people that bully are people with weak characters. Yeah. And kids that are usually there's something wrong at home. Right. You know, a lot of these kids that are bullies, they're usually getting abused at home or either by an older brother or by their dad or yeah. cousins or whoever the fuck it is. It's, and then they're taking it out on someone who they feel is weaker than them. Right. This is one of the reasons why I think martial arts is yeah. so important for young men. Because, I mean, we know from our experience in gyms, when you're dealing with, like, high-level martial artists on a regular basis, like, they're some of the nicest, friendliest fucking people you're ever going to yeah. meet. Because they don't have any insecurities. I mean, and whatever insecurities they have, they get out in the gym. They get out through training. They get out of their frustrations. They don't have all this pent up, fucked up energy that a lot of kids have. Like kids, kids are always dealing with existential angst, and mm. the, 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 their whole life is just this weird ball of confusion right. and hormones, and you know the 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 whole idea of life itself is so confusing that anytime they have any sort of control over anything they exercise it whether it's control over another kid or control over you know throwing a rock through a window or just they don't know what the fuck they're doing Hmm. you know they have all this pent up fucked up energy and pain right and i i think that so many of them are just severely lacking in guidance and discipline and just those things alone guidance and discipline and also the lessons that you learn from martial arts mm-hmm. that you can overcome things that you can get mm-hmm. better at things mm-hmm. and that when you feel like quitting and you don't you actually grow and learn like your experiences like training with uh, Shanji and Salu just like that that's one of the things that made you such a champion i mean d- yeah. d- training with people that are like uh, well, just it all, it all so started much with my dad and, yes. and and having that when i was a kid yes. you know you're so fortunate because yeah. of that i mean and th- those experiences are what shaped you into the person that you are today and a lot of people don't get those experiences, and unfortunately, they act in disgraceful ways. And this is what we were talking about earlier. I mean, to bring it all back to, like, what is martial arts? And are, is martial arts shit talking and throwing dollies, or is is martial arts really competing in one of the most difficult endeavors in all of all of the world yeah. of sports? Well, so I came from a wrestling background, and I believe that is without a doubt a martial art. Yes, um, it is. For without sure. a doubt a martial art. 100%. And then um, and my coaches. Probably one of the most important martial yeah, arts. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and one of the toughest to do. Yeah, one of the toughest. Um, without a doubt. And then, um, but then coming into Raphael's gym, uh, I mean, academy in school, it, it started teaching me like the martial arts principles. We didn't really talk about that so much um, in... Uh, in wrestling, it teaches you that that naturally uh, the hard work because it, 
it, it thins the flock pretty quick if you yes. can't can't cut it. Right. Um, but then, what are the six blades like? The... Yeah. So so Salo, he uh, his logo. Uh, it's this star, and, and uh, he considers the middle, middle the spirit of the samurai. And then there's six blades to the star, um, and they stand for six different values. Uh, loyalty, respect, honor, discipline, attitude, and family. And those are the core principles inside, inside uh, the children's program at my academy. Uh, and sort of just the... There it is right there. The, the, uh, it's a very famous logo. Yes, it is. I have <laughs> right here. I carry it with me everywhere. Bam. Yeah, that's it. But um, you know, besides for the you know the those are the 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 core values, and then you know being a forever student and uh, dedicating your life to learning and bettering yourself. I mean, these things that martial arts gives you. I just I, I you know there are certain areas and other sports that they give you a piece of that, but nothing is like martial arts. You know, for me. It, Everything I know of I life, agree. I've learned through martial arts. There's, yeah, I think what you're saying that there's there's other sports that teach you discipline. Like, just I mean, if you become a long distance runner, there's there's discipline mm -hmm. involved in that that's going to build up your character, but it's not specifically emphasized the way it is in martial arts. Yes, yeah. And so I I've been looking into it and researching, and we're partnering with Century, we're partnering with Zebra, we're partnering with Gameness, we're partnering with um, Supless. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the Bulgarian bags and the throwing dummies, mm -hmm. yes, um, and uh, the gladiator wall. We're partnering with them because What's the gladiator wall. The gladiator wall is uh, the wood that is you can hang on it and you can do all sorts of stretching. The different bars, the um, level almost looks like a ladder. Actually, Jamie, if you could pull up fightforthegod.org, um, I've actually got something to show and there's soup less on there. We um, should give a shout out to the Cash App too. Oh my gosh, the Cash App is uh, one of my favorite sponsors. Has done an incredible thing in donating five dollars to Fight for the Forgotten every time someone signs up and uses the code word Joe Rogan. Rogan yep. which is pretty We've amazing. Got thousands of dollars. Yeah, from that. they've built two wells. More of them. More, are being more built. coming. Uh, yeah. In January, we're starting to implement, but um, Cash App came to me and we were trying to do a $50,000 fundraiser um, to drill a deep, deep well um, in Tanzania for the Maasai Warriors. Um, and we're going to do that with Water Boys, which is Chris Long's uh, foundation. Chris Long plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. He won the Super Bowl, donated his entire salary. Really great guy. Climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with him. And we were partnering together to help this village to get 7,500 people clean water. So it's about $6 per person. I started posting about that, and Garrett McManus uh, from Cash App hit me up and was just like, hey, we want to do something big with you guys. Um, and we already had another $50,000 donor that was being anonymous, and Cash App came in and said, hey, we're going to match that $50,000 match you have. So Cash App gives $50,000 if we could raise $50,000. And so we ended up raising $50,000, $52,625, then, uh, and then it was tripled. So it, it, it came out to being 152625 and uh, Cash App gave us $50,000 because they believe in the mission and vision of Fight for the Forgotten. They believe in you. Um, they believe in this community. Um, and, man, I, I absolutely love uh, Cash App. In fact, on this crowdfunding tournament we're doing um, on the website, fightfortheforgotten.org, um, slash heroes, we're doing a Heroes in Waiting crowdfunding tournament. And so we're inviting in 100 martial arts academies and 100 individuals to help us raise $4,200. There it and is. So, yeah, we're doing it through December 31st. So we're giving us uh, quite a bit of time. But what we're going to be doing is the crowdfunding tournament is going to fund uh, Wells. So it'll transform a community with the $4,200 and it will equip their martial arts academy with a bullying prevention curriculum. So they'll Which is amazing, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that you could ever asked for uh to help uh, pass that knowledge along and increase your program you know help your school bring more kids in uh make a bigger impact um so not only are you helping the kids but then you're also raising money uh inside the academy to help towards um you know the fight for, for the forgotten yeah and uh it's it's going to be a thing where so the, it's there's 12 weeks of mat chat topics and i love it because heroes in waiting talks about hey everyone is a hero in waiting and what is a hero a hero is someone who sees a need and takes action uh, immediately. And so we're teaching the kids that, hey, uh, guess what? 87% of the time, whenever you see bullying and you say something, it can be as easy as, hey, that's not kind. Or, or you include the person that's being bullying into your group. Hey, come over here. Um, within five seconds, uh, the bullying stops 87% of the time. All you have to do is say one thing. 87% of the time, almost nine out of 10 times, you can shut down bullying whenever you see it happening. Because here's the problem. Uh, whenever people think you're, 
when you see bullying happening, a lot of times you might think you're an innocent bystander, but, but your body language and you being around and involved in the bully seeing that, he takes you being that you're a silent supporter. So you're not an innocent mm-hmm. bystander. You're now involved when right. you see it. And so you're being a silent supporter if you're not standing up and doing something about it. And so we're doing this competition, and whoever whoever's the top crowdfunding t- uh, team is going to get their gym renovated by Zebra. They're going to get $10,000 worth of Zebra mats. Um, Century is going to come in and do $10,000 worth of uh, gear. They're going to do gloves, uh, headgear, um, sparring equipment, shields, uh, the Bob the Dummy. Um, Suples is going to do the, the Bulgarian bag, uh, the throwing dummy. Um, and then the top individual fundraiser is going to get a free home gym from Zebra and Century Gear. Uh, Bellator just let me know last night that whoever is the top fundraising individual is going to um, get flown out all-inclusive um, to uh, to January 26th, the heavyweight Grand Prix finale uh, between um, Fedor and Ryan Fedor Bader. And Ryan Bader. At the Forum. Yep, at the Forum in L.A. So they're going to get they're going to get three nights of hotel rooms. They're going to get their airfare paid for, and uh, so basically, what Fight for the Forgotten is trying to do is raise four hundred and twenty thousand dollars throughout the rest of the year. And what we'll be able to do with that is hopefully drill equivalent to a hundred water wells, or serve thirty thousand people minimum. Hopefully, it'll be around forty five thousand people with clean water, and then um, it's it's pretty easy if people go and hit sign up. Um, Jamie, if you could just hit the link, it's uh, it's sign up. It, we're trying to make it really fun well, and competitive. Well, let's just tell people how to get to it. It's fightfortheforgotten.org yep. forward slash heroes. Yep, forward slash heroes. And then here, whenever they go down, um, you can hit become a fundraiser. And whenever you hit become a fundraiser, you can either create a team, which we did with Lovato's uh, a couple nights ago. Um, you can hit join a team. So if a team's already created, you can join that team. Or if you're an individual martial artist or just someone that's passionate about the cause, you can hit uh, start fundraising as an individual. Awesome. Um, and then we're going to have a top 10 prizes, uh, basically like prize packs. The top crowdfunding team is going to get a championship belt, a fight for the forgotten championship belt. Uh, two through 10 are going to get championship trophies. And then anyone that hits the goal of $4,200 is going to get a fight for the forgotten gold medal for hitting the goal. Um, but the, uh, if, if you actually click out of that and then scroll down, Jamie, you can actually see how it, it's kind of started a little bit more. But there's uh, already a few teams. Wow, there's four teams now that have signed up, and some of them are raised. We haven't announced it yet. So um, there's Team Lovato down there. There's And it, what it will do is it will show the top team so you can track it and make it competitive. So you can go on there and make a comment whenever you donate. Um, but basically, I guess martial arts and more, uh, I do know them. If you click on their page, um, it's a guy out of South Carol- or sorry, North Carolina, Jacksonville, um, and he just got hit by the hurricane brutally. Um, he can't go back into his home for another year. A year? A year he can't go back into his home. He's living in the academy. Why a year? His homeowners association said it's going to be like a year of cleanup. To fix and everything? To Jesus fix everything. Christ. So, um, that's what it's predicted to be. But he set the goal <sighs> at $4,200. He wants to teach his community. Um, this is James Wright. And uh, he, he's wanting to you know teach the kids, that, hey, we are still heroes in waiting. We can still make a difference in our community with bullying prevention and globally with a community that needs clean water. And so that's what we're trying to do is make a difference in both places. Awesome. Drill the wells and um, equip the Martial Arts Academy with bullying prevention.